Hey, this is Daniel Grove. In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 awesome Photoshop tricks in less than 10 minutes. Let's start with number one, putting the save as command back to how it used to be. A few updates ago, Photoshop changed how the saving menu worked. I'll show you what I mean. When the update came out, if you went to file and save as, you could only save these large project file formats such as PSD. Before the update, this had JPEG and all the other normal formats in here. But if you wanted to save a smaller image format, save for web or printing, you had to use a new feature, save a copy, which is really annoying, not only because the other click, but also because it added the word copy at the end of your file name. And when you're doing this over and over, it's really annoying removing that. So here are two settings in your preferences to fix that. Go to edit, preferences, file handling. Just enable the legacy save as, which puts it back to how it used to be and how it should have always been. Now with that enabled, I can go to file, save as, and here I have all my normal file formats that I'm used to. And the keyboard shortcut for that is of course, shift control S. Okay, the next tip is in the same screen in the file handling preferences. Let's set the default file location to your computer because I don't use Creative Cloud. I have hard drives. I like stuff being within my own possession. And when I save a brand new file I've just created, it always pops up the Adobe Creative Cloud storage and I don't like that. So I just changed that to on your computer. There you go. Next tip is also in the same window. Be sure that automatically save recovery information is enabled and set it to every five minutes. Now, this is up to your preference, of course, but personally, I like to have this set to as fast as possible because I'm often running a lot of programs in the background and some of my Photoshop files get pretty crazy and I do have Photoshop crash in me about once a month. So if I have at least every five minutes of work saved, I'll be a happy camper. Okay, click OK to save those preferences. Next tip has to do with the brush tool, which I use all the time. I'm gonna press the letter B for brush, and I'm gonna select the basic and default Photoshop round. And here is a trick. You can change the brush size as well as other parameters with your mouse and keyboard alone. No longer we have to use your bracket keys to size your brush up and down, or right click to change your brush size or hardness. Now you can do it from your keyboard alone. So on Windows, hold Control, Alt, and then click with your right mouse button, and you can drag left and right to change your brush size, up and down to change your hardness, and with a little bit of practice, you can get pretty smooth at it, and it should save you a little bit of time. Now, if you're using a brush that doesn't have hardness, then the same settings will control your brush size from left to right, and up and down or vertical is your opacity. Next tip is you can control the opacity of your selected layer by using the keyboard alone. If you press one, this layer is suddenly at 10%. The numbers will change the opacity in increments of 10, but you can type in a double number such as 55 or 47, 99. Any number you type in will become the opacity, but if you press a single number, it'll just go in tens. Zero is 100%. That's a fast time-saving tip that I use all the time. Next tip is using layer comps in Photoshop. I just learned this recently after using Photoshop for like 20 years. I had no idea layer comps even existed. To find it, go to window and layer comps. A layer comp is basically a layer composition or a group of layers that you want to be visible at any given time. So in this Photoshop file, I have a bunch of groups over here, which of course contain numerous elements such as photos and text. And they are essentially individual pages of a document that I'm creating for my church. So an easier way to go through these layers and to export them quickly is by using layer comps. So all you have to do is make all the layers visible that you want to have in one layer comp and click create new layer comp. I'm gonna name this page one. Okay, let's make another one for another set of layers. Hide what you don't wanna see, make visible what you do wanna see, which of course is everything inside of here, and make another one. I'm gonna name this page two. And now in a layer comps panel, if you click on that make visible to the left, it will show any group of random layers that you want that were assigned to those layer comps. Let's say you hide a few elements or add new stuff and you wanna update that. Again, this is on page two, right? It's the second group. So select page two, and if I click update, there we go. Now I can go switch between other layer comps and those changes I just made of visibility are updated. Layer comps also apply not only to visibility of the layer, but also to position, layer styles, and smart objects. You can even have comments in here. This is super handy for those who do graphic design, book layouts, and even photo albums in Photoshop. The next tip is how to export these layer comps as individual files, just like a batch process. Once you have all your layer comps made, simply go to File, Export, and Layer Comps to Files. Tell it what folder to go in, give it a name prefix, file format, and click run. I'm gonna name this layer comp export test. Click run, and it goes through each layer comp and exports it as a JPEG. This would be great for wedding album pages or something like that, instead of going individually and exporting them manually. And now in my graphics folder, here they are, layer comp export test, all of them exported with the name, and that only took a few clicks. 
Next tip is how to use your scroll wheel on your mouse for zooming. Go to Edit, Preferences, and Tools. And here in the top right, check Zoom with Scroll Wheel. Now before, with this checked off, the scroll wheel is scrolling up and down. I don't really find myself scrolling in up and down a lot. I will just press Z and I use a scrubby zoom uh, to zoom in and out like that with my click and drag. And if I am zoomed in, I'll hold space bar to pan around. But with your scroll wheel zoom enabled, now I don't even have to press Z. I just roll my scroll wheel up and down and I can use space bar to pan. And now I don't have to switch tools by pressing another letter. I still have my brush tool selected and now I can zoom in and out with my scroll wheel. The next tip is using content aware fill to fill in areas of your photo. Let's pretend that I took the photo like this and I don't like that. There's not enough headspace. I can actually use content aware fill to fill that space automatically. So I'm going to actually crop back and you'll see that area is empty because I deleted those pixels. If I zoom in and use my rectangular marquee tool to select that area, I can press shift F5 and select content aware fill. Now it's not always perfect. Sometimes it takes some cleanup, which we could easily do here. I find this tool most helpful with skylines. If you didn't get enough sky in your picture, you can use a content aware fill with a little bit of brushing to create a sky that didn't exist. Although my most common use for content aware fill is actually removing or covering up blemishes. For example, in this photo, there's some distracting stuff on the wall. I'm going to use my uh, polygonal lasso tool to just draw a real rough shape around those things I don't want to be in the picture. Shift F5, hit enter, and boom, they're gone. Gonna remove this light fixture from the wall. Shift F5, enter. And of course, my pesky light stand that always creeps in the edge of my photos. Shift F5, it's gone. All right, next step, here's how to add a realistic looking bokeh to overlay images. So let's say you wanna add some kind of shiny orby bokeh overlay on top or behind something. You can actually bring in any random image that has a lot of contrast and highlights, such as this image. This image is roughly in focus, but it has a lot of nice little specular highlights. Now, if I use levels to turn this into just the highlights, yeah, it looks terrible right now, but just give me just a second. I'll show you a cool trick. I'm going to use this as an overlay by putting it on screen mode over here. And now we're going to use Photoshop's newer blur tools in the blur gallery menu. So let's go to field blur and let's turn the blur up pretty high because it's a nice soft Gaussian blur, but here's the magic over here. In the effects panel for the blur tools, uh, we can actually turn up light bokeh. And now look, we have a pretty realistic looking bokeh effect. Turn up bokeh color, you get a little more color data in there. If you're not seeing it, you may need to adjust the light range to um, include you know, the details that you're hoping to blur. Your blur amount, of course, increases the size of the bokeh blur. Pretty cool, those look like, I mean, that looks, I'm a photographer and this looks pretty realistic. Minus some of the texture and the, the deformation that lenses cause, this is a very realistic bokeh look and you can do a lot of really cool stuff with this if you don't already have bokeh overlays or if your original image didn't have the bokeh you were hoping to have in the background or foreground. To take this trick to a new level, I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna use a different blur tool, which is the tilt shift, which gives you an in-focus area in the middle strip and then this is the start of the blur and this dashed line is the end of the blur. So if I turn my blur up super high, you can see close to the starting line, nothing is blurred, but everything past it gets blurred kind of like in a linear gradient kind of way. And at the end of this dash line is the full blur amount. You can change the angle. You can move it like this or anything before and after that. Anything outside this middle zone is getting blurred, but I'm gonna do it like this to where things as it get closer to the bottom left, they'll get blurrier and blurrier. Let's turn up our bokeh. There we go. Get some color in there. Not really liking this red color. I can easily change that by playing with the hues. Click OK and then Control U to change the hue of that layer. I hope you were inspired and learned something new from this video. I am creating in-depth video courses for Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. So if you're interested in learning the basics of Photoshop and Lightroom or the advanced stuff like compositing, retouching, and special effects, stay tuned because there's some awesome content coming your way that will get you rocking and rolling in these programs in no time. Have a great week.